consistent, you have to make the problem work. Come on, I'm not talking about anybody knowing that. You know, if you feel like you've you given everything you possibly could do, but you can't do better, things have actually gotten worse. You feel like your life is pretty out of control. You turn on the news and the doctor even mentioned today, and it seems like the end of the world is near. And by the way, as a Christian, that those are words that we can encourage one another with. That's what we can do. The only thing is that we can encourage one another with these words. But if you are scared of the end of the world, you don't know how the book ends. I'm not excited that Israel is saying it. I'm excited that the, that the word of God got it right here. Maybe it's exactly what's going on. If you really want to study a little bit about it, I have wondered. I can't be thoroughly convinced on this because anybody can be an expert on something that happened yet. Right? If you know, it's, it's ever listen to anybody talk about the end of
And we will rely on the things of the world as sort of the firm foundation of who God is. I'm going to remind you of this today. Let's talk about God's work. Come on, Lamentations chapter 3. And what are we starting at verse 19? Lamentations chapter 3, starting at verse 19. We're going to go through verse 27. I'm just a, a little bit of fun, like a fun little note you can write and then study for yourself some other time. It's a little extra and like a charge of work. You can, uh, Lamentations is, is, is unique from a book of the Bible. Every chapter, this is a few chapters, but every chapter outside of chapter 3 is, is written in 22 verses. Now, the verses, they weren't written in verses then, but we thought they were in the way, but there were only, there were only 22 letters in the Hebrew alphabet. So every thought started with the succeeding uh, a letter in the Hebrew alphabet. And then when we get to chapter 3, chapter 3 has not 22, but 66 verses in it. So it's a little bit longer. So every third verse actually starts with the next Hebrew letter in the alphabet, which is just full of the matter that you ever happen to be on Jeopardy. Maybe you can answer that one day and it's going to be so here we are, Lamentations chapter 3, starting at verse 19. And if you have it and you're able, which is praying for the reading of God's word this morning, Lamentations chapter 3, starting at verse 19. Here's what the word of the Lord says on a beautiful spring. We're getting close to the summer as long as it is not raining. And so that's how Here it is in Lamentations chapter 3, starting at verse 19. That the thought of my suffering and homelessness is bitter beyond words. I will never forget this awful time as I grieve over my loss, yet I still dare to hope when I remember this. The faithful love of the Lord never ends. His mercy never ceases. Great is his faithfulness. His mercy is going to fresh each morning. I say to myself, the Lord is my heritage, therefore I will hope in him. The Lord is good to those who depend on Him, to those who search for Him, so it is good to wait quietly for salvation from the Lord. It is good for people to submit to it at an early age, the yoke of His discipline. Let's pray. Father, one more time, would you release the power of your written word into our lives? For in the mighty name of we send Jesus, the destruction to God, may faith rise in our soul as your perfect love is so every fear, Lord, out of the dream, out of our hearts, out of our families, in the name of Jesus, Lord, would you be glorified. God, whatever you want to do today, would you do it in such a way that only you get the glory. In Jesus' mighty name, come on, if you agree with that this morning, would you say amen? And then look at something that says, I pray that you do. Okay. We're going to be interrupted today, all right? So I just do, I do want to warn you, if you are not interactive, you know, like, like just let me know every once in a while, and I'm on the right path, give me a name, give me a shout, give me a yes. I know there was one place on the side of the paper, really doesn't make sense, and it's, and it's in Newark, New Jersey, and every city, Newark, New Jersey, and, and uh, I was thinking, and I'm going up there, whatever, I said, yeah, I know this yet, I tend to get a little excited, all right? So I apologize ahead of the day. Uh, but there's a gentleman sitting right over there, and he's just kind of in one of those moments, and he goes, Give me up. All right. And I'm like, I don't think you know what that means in New York, New Jersey, but I think, you know, but, uh, you know, I'm very grateful for it, but it's like, when you say amen to a preacher, it's like saying stick them to a ball, you know? So, uh, you know, if you hear something you agree with, and then here's a couple of things it does. So, right, number one, it does encourage the preacher a little bit, but the second thing it really does, and the most important thing is this, that it makes you come into agreement with the Word of God, because when two or three gather and we agree on any one thing, it will be done. And what the wonderful thing is, is when you come into agreement with the Word of God, and you out loud do that in some physical way or in a verbal way, and let the people around you just stop paying attention and start paying attention. And they can get a hold of the same word of God if you just agree. Come on. So, there you go. Now we got a lot. We're going to do it. just fine. Let's go. All right. So, here we are in the of chapter 3. We're talking about hope. Hope. Confident distance to the enduring love of God. I love you. Uh, my, the title uh, I, I want to talk on this morning is verse 21. It was like, despite all the things, despite my suffering, despite my homelessness, despite the bitterness, I will never forget this awful time. But then he says in verse 21, he says, but yet I dare to hope. I dare to hope. I was talking to you this morning about daring to hope. How do you dare to hope? I don't want to unpack this with you, but really, I wanted to kind of put this even into a New Testament perspective. You know, there is a biblical progression for how we live off the faith, the hope and the love that comes from Jesus Christ. That's exactly what Paul writes in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, 13. The three things remain. Come on, you've been in the way, and you've heard this before. 
Well, what are the three things? Oh, my God. That's a good question. You can drink the drink in the morning every morning. What do you got going? Stay. Go. Love. Uh, these three things are this. What are they? That's the biblical progression that we have. It starts with faith. If you want to have hope in your life, you have to bear the hope. If you want to have hope, you have to bear the hope. You have to step up into a place that is unknown to you. Because if it's known to you, it doesn't take faith. If you're living a life in such a way that you can accomplish everything you need to do in and of your own strength, then you are not living a life of faith. Because the Bible says without faith, it is impossible to please God. So that means if you're living a life that you're going to of yourself, that you can do all the by your strength, you don't need any help from anybody else, including God himself, then you are living a life that does not please God. So don't expect to live with him in eternity when you're not living for him here. I do want to apologize to the first bit about the first five or six rows here. He did this kind of old school speed world right there. It's just black drama, right? I got that. I got that. Sorry about that. But if you get to do all of that, that is just coming up front. I can guarantee you that even the more you can fully emote in the name of Jesus. So I just apologize. I'm saying Jesus declared innocent on the cross. 
reason behind the old. Yes, I did Thank you. 
what the fuck they want. And so when the soldiers put their spear and erect that sponge of that rack, the rack of the end of the spear dipped down in that rack that it remains to us all. My father said, you know, when they lifted it up to the mouth of my Savior Jesus, that he's hanging on the cross, begging for just a drop of water, that they had that they lifted their hand up, and the Bible says that Jesus tasted it, but he did not inject it. This is you. This is God. But I want you to understand that Jesus tasted the bitterness, but he did not inject it. Here's what I'm trying to tell you. Here's what I'm telling you. In this world, you will have trouble. You will have heartache. You will have pain. You will have separation. There will be sin. There will be sickness. There will be sorrow. This is not a fair world. I don't know if you know this or not. This is not a fair world. This is not a fair world. This is not a fair world. The says that we're entitled to all these things. But the reality is that the central found the nature of this world trumps the Constitution of the United States of America. And you don't get to get the other ones. All right. All right. All right. And the pursuit of so the world is getting so quickly out of control to the spirit of kill, steal, and destroy you. You will go through pain. You will go through hardship. You, you will take the better situation. But you do not want to inject that better. You will allow it to take root in who you are. It is the beginning to define you and the beginning to manipulate your thoughts and make you think everyone is out to get you and everybody hates you, including God. Many times we, we, will, we will endure a loss of a loved one. We will endure a, 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 a loss. We will, we will endure a, a, a job that is taken away. The person that's that, 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 that coming late, that they've not been coming to work, that you've been there longer than they have at the company, that you have friends with the boss, and they get the promotion from the most of them. I'm not going to anybody in the room with you. You've got the diagnosis that you never saw coming. You will have bitter situations come your way. We are thankful to that. Even whenever Jesus comes to the bitter, the bitter test for that wine that are mixed with salt, he did not reject it. He did not allow it to take root to where he became unaware of what was going on and the pain and the agony of this world. God, I'm here to tell you today, you are not alone in your sorrow. You are not alone in your pain. Jesus is a man of sorrow, like waiting with grief. He said that he was bruised for our transgression. He was crushed for our iniquity. He was baptized, but the God of peace fell upon. We were healed in Jesus' name. Jesus knows what it feels like to be stripped naked, barren before the world. Jesus knows what it feels like to have his very closest friends who said he would never leave us, and just a few hours later denied him three times. Jesus knows what it feels like to have a tear turned into a star. Jesus knows what it feels like to have a crown of thorns turned deep down into a star. He knows what it feels like to be able to carry the burden and the cross that was laid upon him. I have to watch somebody else do it. He didn't have the strength to do it as a parent. He had time in the career and carried the cross. I thought the Lord could hear the song about that. He just knows what it's like to have a nail put in his hands and his feet. He just knows what it's like to be laying there knowing that he could do it because he could take the come off that cross at any moment because he was there to die for the very ones who could throw the nails in his hands and his feet. He just has like a man of sorrow, the pain of the truth. What makes you think to get what you're going through is any worse than what our Savior was. He knows exactly the pain you went through. He has left the glory of heaven to come down into the garbage of our life just to let us know you are not alone. He is our ever present help in time of you. You're not alone. I don't know where you are, I don't know what's going on in your life today, but you don't have to allow that bitterness to take root. I dare you to have faith and put your hope and trust in Jesus Christ. It's in doing it's in good. James says it this way in James chapter 1. In a child of any kind from your way, consider a chance for your faith to grow. So, let it go. Let it go. It's not popular. Because of our weak westernized Christianity, we realize that we're Jewish kids, but no matter what we're coming away, we're we'll always have enough. No, we don't. We don't have that. But I think that's what the moment is. 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 I
see the faithful love of the Lord and never end. His mercy never ceases. Great is His faithfulness. His mercy has been fresh each morning. I say to myself, the Lord is my inheritance. Therefore, I will hope in Him. I will hope in Him. That's the fun of my Pastor Paul, uh, Pastor Paul Poole, and we were friends for a lot of years. He's one of the very first pastors that ever allowed me to come to their church when I was on first started traveling in 2005 and allowed me to come and speak in the congregation. And he was just an encouraging person to me. He was one of those fathers of the faith that was always as positive. And, you know, I, I knew I'd lay an egg up, but I just preached to God. And he was one of those that made him a great job. And he was doing a miserable thing for him. And I did that. You know, you all know, it's just one of those people. And how many of you have been people? They're, they're just always uplifting people. You know, like, it's just, you don't find a thing, but when you find one, they stick out because there's only one of them around. Come on. That was past the time. And, uh, he, he ends up, you know, with silence and ministry, and this has been several years ago, and I think this is, uh, six years ago, he had retired from ministry and, uh, was, uh, moved uh, over to the east side of, of Pittsburgh, uh, where the sun was passed and was helping that church out. And then, with his side job, I don't know why, but when pastors retire sometimes, they have help you know, I don't know why, but that's what they do. It's weird. I'm not doing it. All right. So, yeah. I love God. Like, you're making But, you know, he was, you know, one of the guys that opened up the door, and, you know, to feel at home and greet people and all this stuff and stuff. Uh, one day, it was, you know, with some weather or whatever was going on outside, and so uh, there were people that the curb was, you know, just feeling on the ground in the ministry of this town, and uh, he opens up the front door to let somebody in and notices as someone that was getting out of the car, so he steps out to the curb to help the person out of the car to get them into the feel at home that they're supposed to do is the same, and it's just the ball slips and falls, and he goes back on the, on, on the edge of the curb. Thank <laughs> you. 
Romans chapter 15, verse 13, it says, I pray that God the source of hope. The day you can do it, but all joy and peace, then you will hold the world with confidence of to the power of the Lord. I pray for you that I pray that God the source of hope will fill you completely with all joy and peace for the peace of the Lord. Then you will hold the world with confidence of the Lord. Thank <laughs> you. 
the 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 Thank you. 